The eviction moratorium set up during the pandemic under the Trump administration is about to end. It's, it's actually going to end August 1st. Uh, and what are we going to do about it? Well, apparently nothing. The Biden administration just announced on Thursday that it will allow a nationwide ban on evictions to expire on Saturday, arguing that, hey, uh, we can't do anything. Uh, the, the Supreme Court, uh, if we if, if we do an executive order, the Supreme Court will uh, eventually step in and uh, stop it. So I guess we can't do anything. So now the White House said that President Biden would have loved to extend it. Uh, however, uh, uh, you know, we, we can't. We can't do anything, Supreme Court. So uh, Congress, now it's your turn. Instead, Biden, according to the article, uh, called on Congress to extend the eviction moratorium to protect such vulnerable renters and their families without delay. And of course, knowing how Congress functions, well, it doesn't function. We know exactly what's going to happen. Nothing. They're about to go on a month-long vacation, Congress is. You think they're going to take this up as their top priority, especially during the talks about infrastructure? No way. That moratorium uh, was put in place last September by the CDC. uh, And according to the White House, given the most recent, uh, I'm sorry, given the recent spread of the Delta variant, including among those Americans most likely to face evictions and lacking vaccinations, President Biden would have strongly supported the decision by the CDC to further extend this eviction moratorium to protect renters at this moment of heightened vulnerability. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court has made it it clear that this option is no longer available. And they, of course, cite the 5-4 decision last month to allow the ban to continue through the end of July. Now, the swing vote in this case was Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh said, this is the last one we're doing, and then you're on your own. We're going to, I'm going to make sure to block any extensions unless there was clear congressional authorization. So to me, that would have been the sign to say, okay, Congress, get to work. We're gonna need something. Because it's very obvious that the moratorium is necessary. And so uh, let me give you some details about that. Uh, By the end of March, about 6.4 million American households were behind on rent according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And as of July 5th, roughly 3.6 million people in the U.S. said that they faced eviction in the next two months, according to the Census Bureau's Household Pulse Survey. So that's uh, disastrous, and yet it is left to Congress. And of course, we're screwed because Congress ain't going to do a goddamn thing. Not good. Uh, And by the way, if we could even get all 50 Democrats together you would likely need 10 10 Republicans to overcome the filibuster, and Republicans are not at all interested in doing anything about homeless people at all. And so, look, I've seen a lot of criticism, you know, uh, from people who might not, uh, first from right-wingers, of course, and then from people who might not know better. Uh, They'll point at the, you know, all the money that was given towards rent relief uh, and the things like the stimulus checks, et cetera, the one-time stimulus checks that we got, a total of three of, ooh, and the unemployment benefits, uh, of an additional $300 a month. Uh, and they'll point to that and like, well, look at those people. Why do they just pay the rent? All right, well, remember, we do live in a country where somebody making minimum wage, which is generally what the unemployment benefits tended to come out to before, uh, yeah, either it was before or after the extra, the additional $300 benefit, uh, it still didn't come out to very much. In no, con- in, in no state in this country can somebody making minimum wage on a minimum wage salary afford an apartment on their own. It, it's, it's impossible. There's, not, there's just not enough money to pay the rent and also to pay bills uh, and, and all of that. So, and I've, and I've uh, told you the studies on that before. But these people say, well, they're, are, they're just sitting on a ton of money. Why didn't they just pay their rent? It's because they haven't gotten that money. Remember, Congress actually allocated $47 billion in rental assistance that was supposed to go to help pay off the months and months of back rent. Unfortunately, only about $3 billion of the first tranche of $25 billion has been distributed so far 
by June or through June by states and localities. So think about that, right? There's uh, $22 billion of unspent money, which means a tiny, tiny fraction of the money has gone to people in need. That's horrible, horrible. Uh, and some states such as New York have distributed almost nothing. N nobody's received the money there. What the hell, New York? No wonder people are still behind there. Now, housing advocates, of course, have weighed in here. Uh, here is Diane Yentel, executive director of the National Low Income Housing Coalition, saying, quote, the confluence of the surging Delta variant with 6.5 million families behind on rent and at risk of eviction when the moratorium expires demands immediate action. The public health necessity of extended protections for renters is obvious. If federal court cases made a broad extension impossible, the Biden administration should implement all possible alternatives, including a more limited moratorium on federally backed properties. So that's really the crux of the issue. Yes, a lot of people have applied for their rent assistance and have not had this back rent paid, which means, of course, as soon as that moratorium is lifted, these people are going to get evicted. They're going to get kicked out of their homes. Not because the money wasn't there, not because it wasn't, uh, you know, it, it wasn't allocated by Congress. It's because it hasn't been dispersed. That's why a moratorium is 100% necessary and so that is, that's what needs to happen. We need to have this uh, moratorium extended for that money to be dispersed. So now, again, uh, Biden is saying, well, I can't do that because uh, Supreme Court, <laughs> so what are you going to do? My hands are tied. Yeah, but you could do more targeted ones at least uh, from, yeah, as Diane Yentl had pointed out. Um, and it still might not be enough, and of course it's going to get challenged, but it might give enough people some breathing room for that money to come, come through. Okay? Um, so I say, why not? Now, there's more. You've got uh, representatives Corey Bush, Jimmy Gomez, and Ayanna Presley uh, putting out a, a joint statement here calling on Biden to do more. Quote, this pandemic is not behind us and our federal housing policies should reflect that stark reality. With the United States facing the most severe crisis in its history, our local and state governments still need more time to distribute critical rental assistance to help keep a roof over the heads of our constituents. I agree. That is a, the, the most sensible statement I've ever seen. And it's an absolute no-brainer. We need the moratorium because that aid has not gone out fast enough to stop people from getting kicked out. And, and you can ask why. Um, you know, what, what happened here, whether it be the inefficiencies of bureaucracy under the pandemic, uh, or possibly you could even go to more nefarious reasons, uh, like Republicans just wanting people to be homeless. Uh, I wouldn't put it past them, right? Uh, but the fact is that we need to do more. Here you have even uh, former uh, Housing and Urban Development Secretary Julian Castro saying, you know what? Fuck it. The CDC should just do it on its own. Here's what he said. The White House is right that Congress must act, but these calls should have come weeks ago, not 72 hours before the moratorium expires. Castro wrote on Twitter, the SCOTUS may uh, strike down a CDC extension, but it's worth the risk to give tenants time to secure assistance without being kicked out in the street. He's absolutely right. The Biden administration right now is being uh, incredibly weak and cowardly on this issue. Oh, but, you know, the, the Supreme Court's not going to do anything. Or uh, the Supreme Court's not going to, you know, they're going to block what I'm going to do. So I'm just not going to do anything. We're just going to throw our hands up and say, nah, not our job. Oops. Why did the Biden administration wait till the 11th hour to do this? I mean, if you, okay. So if he was sitting on an extension and saying, uh, and knowing that this was going to be challenged by Republicans, uh, and so you come out at the last amount of time so that the Republicans have to scramble to do a challenge from the Supreme Court, right? Because somebody actually has to bring a case to the Supreme Court uh, against the CDC, against the moratorium. Uh, and so, you know, this would be a, basically Biden saying, okay, let's do a holding action here, right? Let's hold on to it 
and then whip it out at the last point, right? Uh, at the uh, last time, here you go, emergency extension. Here you go to protect people, right? That would have been a smart, savvy political move, and it would have come out really strong. Biden didn't do that. At least he didn't do it yet. But I don't think he's going to because he's instead saying this, nothing I can do, it's up to Congress. And again, Congress is about ready to go into recess. And that's not good. Y you want to talk about dropping the ball. This is a huge one. I know he's working on infrastructure, but this should be a top priority to keep people in their homes, especially as the Delta variant gets worse. And of course, as funds that are already allocated, this is not asking for more money. This is just asking for the time, you know, time for the money that was already allocated to protect renters from getting kicked out to give them time to do that. The, the landlords are going to get their money. I mean, there are stories of people that have applied and been winning months and months. And they're like, I want to pay the rent. I want to make sure I have a, a place to stay. But that money has not come through yet, even though I am eligible. I'm eligible. And by the way, you know, people that have been able to, lucky enough to get back to work, they can't make enough money to pay the thousands and thousands of dollars of back rent while also keeping current on current bills and, and catching up with other bills and making sure that they have food and, and all that stuff. That's why this is so important. It is so important. These landlords are going to evict millions of people who are waiting on that lifeline. And as little as Biden admittedly could do, he could have at least tried to give them a few extra days or weeks by tying it up in court, or at least doing something limited, something, instead, threw up his hands, punted it over to Congress. <sighs> disastrous. And this is going to be disastrous politically as well. The blame's going to fall on Biden because, for one, it happened on his watch, uh, and two, because he refuses to pack the Supreme Court, right? So if you pack the Supreme Court, well, then there you go. You have that, you can have a majority... So this, if this comes down, Supreme Court can just say, oh, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to be okay with that uh, extension. They'll do that. Or he could at least pressure Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema to try to eliminate the filibuster. But as we pointed out before, as I have, Joe Biden continues to defend the filibuster and say, oh, no, we can't get rid of that. We have to keep the filibuster or, or else everything's going to fall apart. We'll get nothing done. Well, nothing's already getting done. This is going to be a nightmare for so many people from the effects of a pandemic that is not even over yet. The amount of human tragedy that is going to unfold as a result of this for the next few weeks, months, as all of these evictions go through court, it's going to destroy so many lives. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.